Have a good time, guys. Well, I'll ask you my good night, you better go on. Of course. I give a shit, huh? That's my job, thinking up goofy shit. I think it's time for the news. Let's take a look. I'd like to take a look at the news. First of all, the headlines. Three Shriners have been killed in a whoopee cushion explosion. Welcome Wagon runs over newcomer. 21 killed in 21 gun salute. Rapist swallows whistle. Football team dies in sudden death overtime. And the vegetarian has been beaten to death by six meat packers. In other news today, police fired over the heads of rioters. However, they killed 200 people standing on a balcony. A 107-year-old woman in Florida is pregnant. Doctors claim that because of her advanced age, she will have a grown-up. A man has barricaded himself inside of his house. However, he is not armed and no one is paying any attention to him whatsoever. Scientists have discovered a new disease which has no symptoms. It is impossible to detect and there's no known cure. Fortunately, no cases have been reported thus far. A woman was severely injured today when she attempted to force breastfeed a wildcat. A Milwaukee man has been arrested for attempting to use food stamps to mail a box of macaroni. Scientists in Switzerland say they have been able to make mice fart by holding them upside down and tapping them on the stomach with a ballpoint pen. A high-speed chase ended today when the car stopped and the people got out. A dog exploded on a busy downtown street corner today. No one was killed, however, 12 people were overcome by fur. Police estimate that 50 to 60 fleas also lost their lives in the blast. Out at the lake in City Park today, police arrested a one-armed man who was bothering the other boaters by continuously rowing in a circle. A man who was attempting to walk around the world drowned today. A priest who has performed over 300 exorcisms was eaten today by a green boogeyman. The man at a tool and die company died today when he was hit with a tool. Police have broken up another amphetamines ring. It seems that narcotics detectives broke in on 10 of the speed dealers and arrested six of them on the spot. The other four got away by running completely across Canada. <laughs> A man who was shot in the chest nine times yesterday and refused treatment died today. Well, we'll kind of wind up the news tonight with a little human interest story about man's best friend. It seems that 68-year-old James Driscoll was asleep in his downtown hotel room last Wednesday evening when he was awakened by the sound of a dog barking. When he woke, he found the room was full of smoke. He could not see. The dog led him out of the room, down the hall, and into an elevator shaft where he plunged eight stories to his <laughs> Apparently, it wasn't his dog. I like those little uh, moments that we all know. Little things we don't tell each other about, things that happen during the day privately. You've had them. Sometimes they're embarrassing. They're usually very minor. You ever been talking to someone, a little bit of spit flies off your tongue and lands right on the man's nose? And you think, Jesus, didn't he see that? Maybe he's just a really cool guy. He figures it'll evaporate. 
You ever been talking to someone and you, you find yourself clearing your throat for him? He's the one who's got the hawker, and you're the one who's standing there going, <clears throat> You ever been making out with somebody and one of you has a snot that's whistling? First you gotta find out who it is, you know? <laughs> then you gotta find out which side it's on. There's a lot of little checks to be run, you know? Or sometimes you pick your nose and your boss walks around the corner. Hi, Dave, oh. Hi, how are you? Fine? No, I'm just fine, thanks. Well, uh, isometrics, actually. You can't get rid of them. It's like rubber cement. Where are you gonna put them? The furniture is full. I say, put them back. It's a perfect place to store them. Who's gonna look there? Jacques Cousteau puts them back. He tags them first, but he puts them back. Did you ever go to shake somebody's hand and they don't notice? And you gotta kinda go. You have to make believe it's something you do all the time, you know? All right, something I picked up in college. Sightly. Did you ever belch and almost puke? Jesus, I almost puked. <laughs> Turns out it was a belch, but puke was involved. It was a puke-related belch. That's oh, a terrible feeling, isn't it? Because you don't know if you almost got sick or not. Sometimes you wonder if you ought to go out in that condition. Because nobody wants to be sick, you know? For the most part. Oh, there's probably a few people. But fuck them, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about us. Nobody wants to be sick. Being sick is no fun. It even sounds bad. It sounds like what it is. Sick. I'm sick. That's nothing like, well, or better, I'm better. I'm sick. It's no fun. Of course, fortunately for us, we don't get sick right away. First of all, we don't feel good. Hey, what's the matter with you? What are you, sick? No. I just don't feel good, you know? Uh, I don't know what it is. You know, because I'm not sick. I'm not sick. But, that's, I don't feel right at all, you know? I feel like I could get sick if I wanted, but I don't want to. I just hope I don't get sick, man. Oh, crazy, I hope I don't get sick. Oh. Jeez, I wish I would get sick and get it over with. That's finally what you wind up wishing, just to get it over with. Because almost being sick is worse than actually being sick. After all, once you're sick, shit, you're sick. Once you're officially sick, Everything changes, all the attitudes are different, everybody treats you different, even the city has a different attitude. The city has a sanitary code. You put on the sidewalk, it's a $50 fine. Vomiting is free. <laughs> well, how did they arrive at that formula? 
would seem like the bigger the mess, the bigger the fine. Look at this guy here, fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> Leave him alone, will ya? Can't you see he's sick? Go ahead, it's on the house. <laughs> Actually, it's on your trousers. That, that comes right near the end, sir. Yeah. A lot of guys don't do that anymore. All right, I got a few more of these. Hold on. Yeah. All your water. All your water. Did you ever... Sometimes these aren't your fault. That's what I want you to know. You don't have to be embarrassed all the time, but some things do happen and they're not your fault, goddammit. You know that feeling? Not goddammit, it wasn't my fault. That feeling, you know? Did you ever meet a person? Sometimes you meet a person you didn't ask to, but you meet a person and both of their eyes don't look in the same place at the same time. You know, they're just a little independent of each other. And you've got to figure out which one to look at. And of course, you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. You know, in fact, if anything, you try to save their feelings. I usually double up everything, one for each eye. Right, right, yeah, hey, cool, right, 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 right. But after a while, you do notice that one of them is looking at you a little more than the other. And you say, okay. That's the one I'll go with. And as you listen, you realize that he's describing a building down the street. Not your fault. Little things with your eyes with vision, it's very tough to explain things to people because you're standing there, not over there. Like trying to tell someone that they have a little speck of dirt on their face. Isn't that, should be a simple thing. Should be just, hey! You got a little dirt! Right here! Why do they always go to the other side? Everybody says, well, you? No, you asshole! Right next to the bleeding. You ever do this with your eyes before you go to sleep at night when you're still lying in bed there? Did you ever notice that if you close this eye, the pillow is here? If you close that eye, the pillow is down there? Wow! Gives you a great feeling of power, you know? I can move the pillow with my eyes. <laughs> then you got those things that float on your eyes, you know? What are they? Eye floaters, I guess. You know those things, they float across, that if like when you look at a clear sky or a white wall, you can see them. Sometimes they're shaped like amoebas or like erector sets, sometimes like an unfolding erector set going past your eye. But it's, you can never look, and you can never look right at them. They always lead you by about an inch. And the only way you can really see one is to bounce it off the wall of your eye and catch it on the way back. Like, mm, hey, there it is. What the fuck are those things? Eye floaters, I guess. Shit stumps me. Sure. Sure, that's easy. Sure, sure. Share a swallow. I did. Let's go into the kitchen. Let's go into the kitchen, Don. It's much cozier. It is nicer in the kitchen, isn't it? That's where your goddamn food comes from, man. I'll go in here where they prepare the food. It's always nice. Let's go, it's much cozier in the kitchen. I wanted to ask you a few questions about your behavior. Around the house. When you make a sandwich at home, do you reach down past the first three or four pieces of bread? <laughs> to go down and get the good bread. It's like self-preservation. Let my family eat the rotten bread. I'll take care of numero uno. Ah! 
But sometimes you're going down deep into the low. Not so much because of freshness or mold, but because of the size and shape of the slice of bread you're interested in. I think we all know by now that the somewhat wider slices, which hold somewhat more meat, are somewhere near the middle. And you gotta go down past about 10 or 11 pieces to go down and find the two you want matching and then hope they don't rip on the way up. And just as you pull them out, the top eight slices fall the other way. I say, screw it, let him think a burglar made a sandwich. Not my job, straightening up the bread. I have enough trouble with the refrigerator, keeping the refrigerator in order. Heavy shit. Oh, there's a lot of heavy shit in the refrigerator. You ever take a look at that? First of all, I gotta find out who is it that puts back into the refrigerator that half gallon container of milk with only that much left in it? I get that one every time. Hey, here's some milk. Ooh. Holy Christ. Not enough to drink. Better put that back. Let me find what else is in the refrigerator first. I'll get to the ants. I'll get the ants are in the refrigerator. We'll find them. How about the drugs? All right, the drugs. How about, if, how about if we give the drugs to the ants as soon as they come out of the refrigerator, all right? Good way, we'll work this all into one nice package. Macaroons. Peanut butter. Well, we have our food thought on. That's that's where I want to stay for a minute or two. There's some things in the kitchen here. Well, first of all, let's finish with the goddamn icebox. You know there's some things in there we got to look at. Here's a half a lemon that's only been in here for a year. Hawaiian punch over in the corner. How would you like a nice Hawaiian punch? How would you like a nice New York City kicking the balls? <laughs> There's something for every region. Ooh, a jar of mustard with no top on it. However, it's still moist down through the middle of the mustard. If you could put a hot dog in there and get some on it. Did you ever find in the refrigerator, did you ever find an empty plate? Makes you wonder, I always picture a little mouse with a park on, you know? Or did you ever uh, look in the back of the refrigerator, sometimes you find a piece of wax paper and you open it up and there's nothing in it. And you know when the food begins to consume itself, folks, it's time for a little bon ami. Get in there. What else, what else might we find? Sometimes you find something in the refrigerator that looks like it ought to be walked. Get the leash and give this cheese a run, honey, would you? Sometimes you find something in the refrigerator and you don't know what it is. Honey, is this good? What is it? I don't know. I've never seen anything like it. Well, smell it! It has absolutely no smell at all. It's good! You got the butter warmer, too. That butter warmer is kind of a strange thing, you know? And some refrigerators have those butter warmers. Imagine that. Man was originally kind of cold, so he built a house, a little warm box to live inside. It made a good sense. Wasn't in the cold. Nice little warm box living in the house. But he found in the warm box that the meat spoiled kind of quickly. So he built a cold box, a refrigerator, inside the warm box. Cold box in a hot box now. And he put the meat in there and everything was fine. And then he found that the butter wouldn't spread. So he built a hot box, put it inside a cold box, inside a hot box. So you think he might have left the butter out, you know? It separates in August. I have some favorite foods I like to mention, peas. Oh, hey, you like peas? I love peas, god damn. Peas are great. I just like asking for peas, they're so much fun. Peas, please? There's no other food that rhymes with please. 
Uh, peas are great, man. You know why I like peas? Because you get so goddamn many of them. You know, you get more peas of, or than almost anything else you order. Except rice. Rice, you probably get more individual parts. But peas, you get about, I bet you get about 86 or 88 peas in an order of peas. No shit. Think of that. 86 goddamn vegetables, man. For a dollar, whatever they charge for an order of peas. Shit. Peas are great. You get so many of them, you got to see what you can do. You can throw six or seven of them at people and still have plenty to eat. That's what I like about peas. I like a lot of other things about peas. Well, there's different kinds of peas. You got to think about your different pea categories. Of course. Well, no, you find, my friend, that the frozen ones, which are the ones with all the dents in them, man. Dented peas, they ought to call them. They never label shit correctly. Dented peas, nice. Frozen, though, you've noticed they're all the same size. You're quite correct. They're 38 regular. All peas in frozen form, those medium-sized peas. They all look alike. If you had a favorite pea in a box of frozen peas and dropped them on the floor, you'd never find your favorite again. All look alike. Same in the cans, but the cans, and I wonder why are the frozen ones bright green and the ones in the cans look a little used. What do they do to those ones in the can? It must be unspeakable to have them turn color that way. And it says right on the label, green peas, as if they had red ones, you know? I knew they'd be green, Martha. Sometimes it says early June peas. Shit, I'll bet you they slip in late May peas on you, man. And it says fancy, fancy peas. Hey, they're just plain green. You know, I mean, if they had little Donald Ducks on them or something, that would be a fancy pea. So I go on with my romance for peas. Bacon, too. I love bacon. God damn, I love bacon. Smell the bacon? Oh, what is that? Is that bacon? Yes. Oh, God, that bacon smells good. Bacon is good. Cool. Bacon is worth cancer. That's how good bacon is. Goddamn bacon is good. Bacon is even great before you buy it. Can you imagine a product that's great before you even buy it? Bacon is fun to shop for. Bacon is one of the few foods that has little windows in the packages. You can actually open the window and you can actually look inside and see how the bacon is doing. Wouldn't want to bring home some bacon that didn't match the kitchen, would we? Want to get some stripes that suit us. Not too thick, not too thick. Oh, this will be nice. Bring that bacon home. They used to say that you brought home the bacon, didn't they? Once you get it home, though, take a look. It's fun. Underneath all the nice neat strips, all those neat horizontal strips, or vertical if you place the bacon that way. But underneath all those nice neat strips, there's always one freaky piece on the bottom. There. Folded wrong, doesn't have the same markings. It's from a different pig. <laughs> well, there's some things I just won't eat at all. You know, like, yeah, I got certain things, but ugh. You know, you have that. Some people have that, you know, I can't help it. I'm Irish, we don't have a real national cuisine, you know? Uh, how are you, Irish folks? God bless you. May the wind rise at your back and the devil keep his hands off you. I think that's how it goes. Mm. Well, wait a minute now. Let me think a little bit. I gotta have a few minutes. Is that kosher? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to, uh, yeah, I had some more things in the kitchen. I wasn't finished with that yet. Just thinking about my different foods. Thinking about... Thinking about corn on the cob. Corn on the cob. Corn on the cob. Wish I had some, goddamn. Okay, as soon as you run down a little bit, I just try to get going again. You know, I don't want to stifle you and everything. I like to give you a chance to yell your stuff, but it's hard to understand them all, and sometimes I don't even know the material anymore that you're yelling. But it's fine with me, and I just love hearing it. So keep it up, and it's okay by me. I'm having a good time. I'm gonna mention a few foods that I don't like at all. I mean, some things, first of all, I don't eat anything that I don't recognize. 
You know, that's a pretty safe thing. Anything you gotta ask questions about, fuck it, pass, man. <laughs> Say, what is that bullshit? Not me. Well, something I recognize, you know? That's what I want. Even some things I know, I recognize, I don't like them like a tomatoes, you know? Ooh, I'm gonna, sorry, a lot of people like them, I know, but hey, I can't make it. They don't look like they're complete yet. <laughs> they look like they're still in the larva stage. <laughs> a whole lot of seeds and this jelly-looking shit in there, man. <laughs> You smash, hey, tomato soup, great. You smash them up, I don't have to look at them, fine, I can handle it. Certain things like that just don't look right, you know? Okay. Some things ain't got no business, like nuts. Nuts have no business in ice cream, man. What the fuck are nuts doing in ice cream? Nuts are supposed to be in a fucking bowl. All together, they got in ice cream. I can't make a nuts in ice cream, Jack, and they'll fuck up a good layer cake every time, too, man. You're going through, you're sailing through some nice, smooth chocolate cake. You got a nice pasty rhythm going in your mouth inside there. Good texture thing going. Here comes a goddamn nut. <laughs> and butter pecan, butter pecan ice cream would be so good if it wasn't for those stupid pecans in there. It mess, you know, you ever, you ever let a little butter pecan melt in your mouth and you taste how good the butter ice cream is and then there's about eight nuts sitting in there that you have to deal with. You either gotta chew them or put them in the ashtray next to your toenails. Yeah, you save stuff, don't you? Save things at least for one day. <laughs> sure, I don't know. How about... I don't eat no goddamn lobsters or crabs, neither. You know, they don't look like food to me. Something goes like that's coming toward me. <laughs> Does not look like meal time, you know? <laughs> and lobsters lost me when they grew these things on the front, you know? I don't eat, I don't eat anything with a long thing sticking out of it, definitely. That's one of my first rules of diet. Don't eat anything with a long thing sticking out of it. <laughs> Clams and oysters, I don't eat them. It's more of a moral thing. I feel that's their home. You know, I mean, goddamn, there's someone sleeping in there, maybe. Uh, I mean, I'll, if an oyster falls out of his shell, I'll eat him in a minute. But I ain't going in after anybody, you know? <laughs> frog's legs, I don't care for frog's legs either, you know, because I always wonder, what do they do with the rest of the frog? <laughs> what do they do, give them little dollies or something? Yeah, because they never, they never mention frog torsos on the menu. They must sell them to somebody. There's obviously a black market in frog bodies. Nah, not for me. Got to pass on those things. Well, <clears throat> we're out of food. There's nothing in the house. We don't have a thing to eat in this house. Why don't you have a bowl of flour? All we have left is lemon pie filling mix and Knox gelatin. All that good stuff that you save and give to the church for the bazaar when they want some groceries. What's that, Father? Oh, here's some pumpkin meat. Well, we won it from you last year. It's your turn to hold it for a while. Yes, we're actually, we actually need pepper. Oh, you know you're out of things when you need pepper. Pepper lasts forever, doesn't it? Don't they give you a little pepper when you get married and that's it? You never have to buy anything. You we'll go to the supermarket. That's about my only hope. Pick up some groceries, huh? Want to get over there? Go to the supermarket. You know, the supermarket is the only thing that's left of the hunt. The hunt used to really take all day, man. It was a uh, strenuous activity. Dangerous, trying to get some big goddamn animal to run off a cliff and you don't? No wonder those people were hungry at the end of the day. Yeah, the supermarket doesn't leave you much. A little bit of hunting like... So we'll get over and take a look, get a cart. I have to have a cart. I have to have a shopping cart. That is your territory on wheels. For the next 30 minutes, it'll be the center of attention. We want to get a nice cart, one that's working well. We don't. Well, we certainly don't want to get one with a cracked plastic flap on the seat, do we? 
Don't you hate that when that red plastic flap is cracked? I mean, when you go around corners and pulls on the hair is back here. I had assumed you're intending to ride. A lot, of, a lot of people think once you grow up, you can't ride in the car, can you? Bullshit, folks. It's more fun than ever. You can get in there, goddamn right. You don't have to shop with someone else, someone to push you. You can get people to push. Hey, lady, wanna give me a little push? In fact, all you need to do is bring along a canoe paddle with you. You can get around right smartly, thank you. Brings back a little of the primitive flavor of the hunt. We'll get a good, <laughs> good, I'll try to, maybe we'll meet him in the supermarket somewhere. In fact, yeah, he's the guy who's doing a little shopping. Same character, if you know who I mean. We'll get moving around. Little things happen with your cart. You might remember these moments, pulling off something from the shelf and almost putting it in someone else's basket by mistake. Do you notice there's a little moment there when you feel really alien? Like, ooh, 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 ooh. I almost put that in his basket. My basket. My basket. And all the things that I've selected. It must be mine. It's the only one with thumbtacks and birthday candles. You always know your own cart by one weird thing that only you buy. Did you ever look in somebody else's cart and say, Ooh, goddamn, look what they eat. Bologna ripple ice cream. Yeah. Tuna fudge. Pork swirl. Do you ever walk away with someone else's cart by mistake for just a few feet? Boy, they get pissed. <laughs> hey! That's my stuff! Not yet it isn't. Technically, it still belongs to any one of us. And if I want to shop out of your cart, I'll shop out of your cart. Do you have any mint flavored visine by any chance? Okay, custard. Blue food. There is no blue food. I can't find any. Where the fuck is it? Where the hell is the blue food? Some people say blueberries. I say bullshit. Blueberries are purple and everybody knows that. Take a look at them in the kitchen. I don't care what they look like on the vine. Little blue on the vine. Take them in a pie and they're goddamn purple. Next time you're at the diner, ask for purple berry pie. Because that's what they're going to bring. No, blue cheese is white with blue mold in it. Man. I just can't find no blue food, you know? There's no blue flavor, that's for sure. Blue ain't got a flavor. Every other color got a flavor. Why did God leave blue out when he gave out flavors? I mean, green is lime, yellow is lemon, orange is orange. That's an easy one to remember. Red is cherry, raspberry, and strawberry. Purple is grape, and blue doesn't have a flavor. What happened there? Sometimes you'll see a little bowl of blue jello in the cafeteria. <laughs> Don't order it, folks. <laughs> you get around with your... There's a little something you can do with your shopping cart that's kind of fun at the supermarket. It's kind of a practical joke. Uh, I like little practical jokes, you know. Well, I like big practical jokes, too, you know, like blowing up a guy's house. Hey. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of fun, but it takes a long time, and there's a lot of preparation. I like the little practical jokes. You can do them just on the spur of the moment. I call them mental hot foots, you know? Just things to keep people alert. Keep those people around you on their toes. You have an obligation, I think, to your neighbor to keep them alert. The little things you can do. Did you ever try backing out of a drive-in bank? Make a lot of new friends that way. Did you ever go into a gift shop and ask for your gift? They're always so surprised to see me. So, hi, I saw the sign, I came in for mine. <laughs> They're always so... Oh. Did you ever, uh, yes, Jack in the Box is nice. Because, well, you can back out of Jack in the Box is another good thing. Or in Jack in the Box, what you do is you order some food, you know, tell Jack what you want, and uh, get yourself some food. It's about like two seventy-two. You drive up there, the guy opens the window, and he hands you the bag, and he says, two seventy-two, and then you pay him, and you take the bag, and you go to the nearest Jack in the Box, and you order the same thing from Jack. And when you get to the window, you hand him the bag and say, two seventy-two. <laughs> Lots of fun. 
But I know, some, here's, some, here's a, some, a little, they're little short ones, things you can do. Go into an ordinary store and say, are you open on Thursdays? <laughs> Let them figure it out. You know? Stand on line at the bank for about half an hour. When you finally get up there, just ask for change of a nickel. <laughs> Go into a neighborhood photographer's shop and ask him if you can buy the pictures of the other people in the window. <laughs> oh, they look at you a long time on that one. Here's a good one, if you're in a bar and somebody says, hey, can I buy you a drink? Say, no thanks, but can I have the money, please? <laughs> sure. Or sometimes you go to an office or you go to uh, someone's house, they offer you coffee all the time. Everywhere you go, people say, you want some coffee? Say, no thanks, I've uh, got a lot of it at home. But, uh, you got pepper? You have any pepper? We're out of pepper. <laughs> Get what you want, as long as they're offering things, you know. If you don't see what you want, ask for it, I always say. Sure. Now, wait a minute, there's one or two more of these. One of them is for handkerchief lady. You gotta go in the department store to the handkerchief lady. Usually there's a little older woman who waits on you in the department store. Do you ever notice the ladies in department stores, their eyeglasses are always on a chain? And sometimes their sweaters are on a chain. And if you look really closely, the lady is on a chain. And I go over to the lady and I say, pardon me, do you have any monogrammed handkerchiefs? She'll say, oh, yes, what initial would you like? I say, uh, hey, I don't give a shit. Really hadn't thought about it, you know? <laughs> give me a couple of L's, a J, two N's, an F, and a P. <laughs> or whatever's not moving, you know, I'll take a box of Q's off your hands. <laughs> you don't have any hyphens by any chance, do you? <laughs> I've always wanted to blow my nose directly into a hyphen. <laughs> or, uh, what? Okay, he's gonna take a leak. We're gonna wait, he's gonna take a leak, and then we're gonna continue. We'll try not to say anything real funny while you're gone. Yeah, 10 minutes is okay. He's gonna go take a leak. I'll just move here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we'll wait, we'll wait. We're gonna wait, man, go ahead. Did he leave? Hey. Okay, now you're ready. Yeah, a little later. All right, now I got one more, one more little thing that you can do to uh, entertain those folks around you. And this concerns a little hitchhiking. You'll have to get out on the highway. This one takes a little bit of a commitment. You have to get out there and actually hitchhike. You gotta get a ride. Someone has to stop, open the window and say, where are you going? And you say, well, first of all, I'd like to go pick up my mother. <laughs> then we gotta go to the bank, we gotta go to Sears, we gotta go to the laundromat, we gotta go to the library, and then... And she says, where are you going? You tell them, I just want to ride around a couple hours, you know? I don't give a shit, where are you going? I said, I'd like to use the car on the weekend, if you don't mind. I don't actually need it today, but I would like you to bring it over tonight. <laughs> well, anyway, back to the supermarket. This is a simple thing. You've got to have a cart, shopping cart full for this. I mean, a mound of groceries. You've got to have it decked, topped. The kind of a uh, full cart that takes you around the corners. You know that feeling? Hmm. Get a good full cart and get up to the checkout line and look for somebody with just one item. A guy with a grapefruit. And ask him if you can get ahead of him. Do you mind? I only have a full cart. And a lot of people have noticed, and I'm among them, that it's a lot more fun to shop when you're hungry. You know, it adds a little dash to the occasion. I think, well, actually, that's why uh, I say, if you're, gonna be, if you're gonna shop, be a little hungry, folks. Be a little, I'm not talking about, a, you know, skipping breakfast. I mean a three-day fast. <laughs> I mean serious hunger. And just before you leave the house, smoke about six joints. <laughs> smoke about six joints. And go down to the bank for a grocery loan. Twelve hundred dollars. You buy everything, man. Canned cans. Just what I need. The things you really love. You know the things you really love. 
When you're stoned, you buy two of them. Because you know you're going to eat one of them as soon as you get home. Say, look at that, Marge. I really love that. I'm going to eat that shit in the car. But after a few aisles, it doesn't take long, just a few aisles of shopping in that condition, you begin to realize you've spent a little too much money. In fact, you have a motorcade of carts now, complete with tow hitches and railroad flares, and you're wearing a reflector raincoat. Yes, you've lost control again. And that means it's time to start putting back a few of the more expensive items, like ham, $14. Fuck ham. <laughs> Get some more junior mints, honey. I put the ham back. <laughs> nice thing about the supermarket, though, is when you put something back, you can put it back anywhere. <laughs> put it anywhere, honey. Go ahead. They understand. They expect that shit. Put the coconuts in with the watermelon. You know. Put the tomatoes and Brillo together. They have guys that straighten that shit out. Guys with purple fingers come around at midnight. In the morning, everything is back. Now, you ever get, I'm sure I don't have to ask you this question. It's kind of fun to get to a supermarket in a real head neighborhood, a really good freak zone. Some area where... Where just about everyone is getting... You know the area. Drop in the supermarket and take a look at the cookie section. It looks like a war zone, you know? Half the packages are open. And all the good cookies are gone. Where the hell are the Mallow Malls? Hey, we can't get them in the store. They line up with the truck for Mallow Mall. There's always lots of shitty cookies, though. Did you ever notice the shitty cookie display is still intact after 11 years? Nobody wants them. Shitty cookies, you know. Hydrox, Keebler, local cookies. Cookies that are made within six blocks of the store. Like Jim's Cookies. 63 varieties. Hey. Keebler! Keebler! Well, I can see we're not getting anywhere with this. We better get up and check out of this goddamn supermarket. Let's get up and get out to the checkout zone. Go to the drugstore! <laughs> this cat is a one-track man. No, we're going home because the dog is waiting. Dog is waiting, waiting again, waiting and waiting and waiting. That's all the dog does. You ever notice that? Waiting. Watch your dog. He's waiting for something. He's waiting for you to say something, if nothing else. Waiting, standing, waiting, just looking around, always waiting. That's their job, waiting and lying around. Those two things, they have nothing to do, you know. Did you ever notice that? A dog doesn't have a goddamn thing to do. Except wait, they just wait around, looking at you, waiting, you know. Sometimes they're officially waiting. Sometimes they're on duty as waiting dogs. When you can't bring them in a store, you gotta tie them up outside. Tie them up there, now you wait there. And they wait, man, they are really alert, you know. Don't you ever notice they're really professionally waiting now, boy. Oh, and you can never get close to a dog at a time like that. You can never get nice in the halls, and they're nice and listening. You can get the fuck out of here, lady, will you? Jeez. Now you made me forget what color shirt he has on. <laughs> Just waiting and waiting, because the dog, dog doesn't understand, you know, dog only has one unit of time measurement that they really understand, and that is forever. <laughs> That's it, forever. That's how long they think you're going to be gone. Otherwise, why would they act the way they do? When you come home, oh boy, 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 I thought you were never gonna come home. 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 No, this time I thought you were never gonna come home. No, really. And I don't know how to operate the can opener. I was really starting to panic. I didn't know what the fuck to do. I thought you were never gonna come home.
Even if you only just forgot your keys and came back eight seconds later, they do the same. Oh boy, boy, boy! I thought you were never gonna come home. I thought you were never gonna come home. I thought you were never gonna come home. Would you get out of here? I was just here. <laughs> this time, I thought you were never coming home because this time you turned out all the lights. <laughs> Usually, you leave that little one on in the hall. Poor little doggy. Little goddamn dog. How's your dog? What a neighbor. How's your dog? No. Just fine, thanks. Strangest chap never asks about my family. Just, how's that goddamn dog doing? No. Just fine. Look at the dog, he's dreaming. Look, honey, look, the dog is dreaming. Look at him dreaming. <laughs> look, he's dreaming that he's chasing a bunny. Look, he's dreaming he's chasing a bunny. Looks like he's having a fit to me, honey. Remember how great you felt the first time you realized that if you scratch your dog there, you can make this leg go like that? Look at that, honey, I can start it and stop that. Goddamn dog. Sometimes they're really exasperating. You ever try to get your dog to look at something? Something that you know he'd be interested in? They won't look anywhere. Trying to get him to look at another dog on television? Look, look at the dog on TV! Look. They never look where you want. If you point at something, they look at your hand. <laughs> look at his hand. You try to push their head, they look at the hand. <laughs> hey, what is his hand doing on my head? What did I do now? Well, for one thing, you missed the dog. Cutest little thing, goddamn chuck wagon goes right through the wall. Nobody knows how they do it. It's a mystery. Cat seen it three times. Goddamn dog hasn't seen it. Poor little guy. They look at you real great too, don't they? Well, you sometimes your dog, hey, maybe you retired for the evening, you know? You gone to bed. You and your person and your doggy in the bedroom with you. Three of you watching TV, maybe, you know? Still got the light on, talking a little bit. Dog's lying there. And one of you says to the other, Honey, did you fart? Not me! Oh, I thought you farted. Not me? That ain't even one of my farts. I ain't no. The dog farted! Why did you fart, Tippy? Look at him, he knows he farted. I seen his ass open up. I seen his ass open up. Well, I just happened to be looking at his ass by chance. Call it good luck on my part. I thought he was doing deep breathing exercise. Well, what does he know about the dog? Bogey went away. Bogey ran away. Yeah, you know, the doggy doesn't care. Goddamn dog don't care. Did you ever notice that? Dog doesn't care. They really don't care. Take a long, slow look at your dog and you'll see he doesn't care. They just don't care. They have nothing to do. And so they don't care about anything. They have a few instincts that they have to obey. But on the elective stuff, they don't care. Did you ever see a dog with a list? They have no sense of priorities. Try to get a dog to organize. <laughs> it's like talking to a dog. Don't care. They might do anything. They might embarrass you. You could have some friends in the house. Maybe some folks you don't know that well even. Hmm? A few neighbors around the coffee table in the living room. The doggy's there. Everybody's talking nice. Got a little chip and dip. Good conversation. And as you're talking, the dog is licking his ball. Nobody mentions it. 
Nobody says a word. Spectacular thing going on there. Hey, if I could reach, I'd never leave the house. Are you kidding? <laughs> they don't say a word. You might hear a little something like, isn't he cute? He's taking a bath. He appears to be licking his balls to me, Marge. He's been on that one spot for over an hour now. That would have to be a mighty selective bath. Oh, no, nice dog. No, 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 no. No, 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 nice dog. Don't you know they have the cleanest mouth of any animal? I'm just going by where he's been, honey. I'm certainly not a chemist. Hey, dogs. Dogs look at you really fierce, you know? Even when they're looking at you lovingly, it's a really penetrating look. They just got a way of really looking right at you. Sometimes you can make their head tilt. You ever make their heads tilt and you make a funny noise? They cock their heads, you go, and you go. So, oh, look, isn't he cute like that? Let's get him fixed so he stays like that. Cute little doggy when he does that. Oh, yeah, your doggy. Well, that look that he gives you might come from something, you know, like, who knows what's in his mind? Take a little brain, you know, take a little brain. But it's in there, you know, and they seem to know things. They look at you like they know things they didn't read somewhere, you know? Shit, extra things. They seem to know when you're leaving town. Even before you get the suitcases out, they know. They're starting to say, oh, shit, the suitcases are coming out soon. They know, they look at you like that when you're having a fucked up phone call. They look right at you, they know. Yeah. Sometimes they, they come running in from outdoors. You've been indoors all afternoon. The doggy comes running in, he runs over to your chair and he goes. <laughs> like there's something really neat in the yard he wants to tell you about. Or like he's got a geometry problem he just can't crack on his own. Something's on his mind. If only they could talk. Look at those eyes. A little sadness, too. So much sadness in the eyes of a dog. All the sadness in the world is in the eyes of a dog. Do this. Look at your dog someday right in the eyes and think of something incredibly sad, and it'll look like it's happening to your dog. <laughs> Funniest feeling. Little guys. Well, cats don't look at you like that at all, do they? Cats look at you as if they were testing new eyes. Cats, they never seem to look in between anything. They seem to have a series of points that they settle on, and they don't really know any of the detail in the room. You know, they really lack sufficient knowledge to make a judgment on things. No wonder they have to fuck around with everything when they get over on a shelf. Oh, there's a thimble, oh, I see what that is now. Oh, yeah, what is it? They don't look at it from across the room. Everything is like that. Little kitty cat. That's why we love them so much, we call them kitty cat. We got a double name. That's how goddamn cute they are. Kitty cat! I don't say kitty cat. I think you say kitty cat a lot more than puppy dog. I don't say puppy dog that much. Puppy dog's for a real small little doggy, but a kitty cat could be a big six foot motherfucker, you know? <laughs> Ooh, kitty cat. <laughs> little kitty cat. Have you seen the cat this morning at all? Has anyone seen the cat? I haven't at all. No, I don't mean last night. I mean this morning. Oh, I hope he didn't get out. Is there a window open? Oh, God. Okay. Hey, will you shut up? He's okay. They're very independent. They like to climb up somewhere. He probably climbed up high, laying on a shelf. Five days later, you find him in a drawer. <laughs> the price of independence, you know? Sure, that's what's nice. That's one of the things we love about him. The independent take care of himself. By God, there's a cat for you. Doesn't have to do a thing for him. Takes care of everything. Gets up in the morning, gets his own breakfast, and drives himself to work. That's just what I need, a pet who doesn't give a shit if I live or die. That's the way cats are. It's not really affection, it's rubbing and stuff. You know, if you die, they'll go next door for two and a half to two nights. It takes two nights, they start going to the neighbor. A simple thing. Little kitty cats, what do they know? Well, they are that way, though. Very physical, they push on you. If you push on a cat, he pushes back. Do you ever notice? Do you ever pet a cat who's lying absolutely flat and before you're halfway finished, his ass is way up in the air? <laughs> Isn't he a cute little holy Christ? How did he do that? Then they jump on your chest and put their ass in your face. <laughs> and they go... Get him off of me! God, I can't stand that. I don't know what it is and I don't like it. 